Welcome to the Evening Standard Shop London event. My name is Larry Walsh and I'm the founder of Larry Walsh Studios, the UK's foremost floral design agency and also Bloom, the UK's first 100% plastic free and sustainable online florist. Today, I'm going to be taking you through all of the steps that you need for floral fabulousness as we create our very own hand-tied bouquet at home. In order to do that, you will need a few ingredients. Some scissors, some twine, and a clear glass vase. Perfect for placing on your coffee table at home. I recommend our low chimney clear glass hurricane. They're available on buybloom.co.uk and for all viewers of the Evening Standard, we're offering a special discount code using ES Shops, you'll be able to get 10% off site-wide. So to begin, once you've got your flowers from your florist, or if you source them from the garden, you need to just place those together in groups. This will make it much easier when we're actually designing the bouquet itself. Today we're working with white roses, white wax flower, some white and green ornithogalums, some beautiful green viburnum, otherwise known as Gelder Rose, white lilacs, and last but not least, scented white stocks. Now these ingredients actually combine to make one of my personal favourite bouquets and one of our best-selling designs on Bloom. Those you can have for nationwide delivery, seven days a week. Once you've got your ingredients, what we need to do is condition every single stem so it's ready to make into our bouquet. In order to do that, we need to take the leaves away from the stem itself that aren't going to be required. Now, you need to be a little bit brutal here and you need to be prepared to take those reasonably high up the stem because as you hold and you make your bouquet, we need to be ensuring that there aren't any leaves being trapped there. That will create a bacteria and that will reduce the lifespan of your design. So we need to be careful to get this right. So we'll take our roses first of all, and we simply take away the leaves from the base of the stem, working upwards and removing what we don't need. Do also remember flowers drink from the base of the stem. So if you can imagine them being placed into a vase, the first thing that they hit are leaves. We don't want those leaves to get all the water, we want that to go to the flower head. So if we take those away, it's an easier path for the flower itself to drink. So we take each leaf off that we don't need. We can leave on the top one or two. That's no problem at all. We want there to be texture. We just don't want the design to be too bulky. Now, do be careful. If any of your stems do have thorns on them, use scissors when doing this instead of your hands. These particular ones are very good. They come from Holland and most of them come without thorns. Now, what you may notice with certain roses is you might notice that there are some like little curly petals on the outside. Sometimes they're a little bit bruised. They might have little brown marks on them. There's nothing wrong with them at all. They're actually the guard petals. And those are the petals on the outside of the flower bud. They protect the flower until it's ready to open. And then they're the first ones to open as it blooms. So they've often been subject to the weather a little more than the rest. And what you can do is just pluck those off if you don't want them and if you don't like them. I quite enjoy them in a mixed design because it adds a little bit more texture. But if I were doing wedding work or if I were creating a bridal bouquet, I would want to make sure that we take all of those off so that every single flower is utterly perfect. Now, with our wax flower, all we need to do is take again the leaves and the stems away from the center that we don't need. So we work up from the bottom and we'll take away any little bits and pieces that aren't required. And we'll just leave the flowers at the top. Now, you'll notice with wax flower, it's got a really beautiful soft scent and it almost smells like lemon. It's a really beautiful citrusy tone. And if you just 
crush any of the little flowers there. It smells amazing. So it's really nice to mix in with your designs because as you brush past them in the home, they'll scent the room really lovely. Now do take care when conditioning your flowers. This is pretty much the most important step. If you look after all of your produce, a bit like when you're cooking at home, then you will end up with a really beautiful finished result. So just working down every single stem and making sure that we take off everything that we don't need. Sometimes that does mean a few of the flowers go to one side. If you don't like to have waste, pop them on the side of your table and then when you're finished, you can add those into a bud vase. And you can decorate the rest of the house with the leftovers. Okay, so onto viburnum. Viburnum is a really, really beautiful flower. It's otherwise known as Gelder Rose. And there, you want to just take away any of the odd stems that are just a little bit too low down. So here, we'll take off those bottom two. We're going to leave on the largest flowers right at the top. Very nice and easy. These are really lovely, manageable, woody stems. And a really great tip when working with wood stems is that when you do cut them, cut them at a 45 degree angle and then Slice up the middle with your scissors. That way you gain more surface area over the actual stem. It allows more water to be absorbed and those flowers will be a lot happier. So we'll just take away the last few pieces here with the viburnum. And all of this you can pretty much do with your hands. The only thing you need to be careful of is thorns on roses just so that you don't hurt yourself. Stocks, just Take away the odd few stems that you don't need that might be a little too far down. Otherwise, these are really beautiful, straightforward, easy to work with flower. They do have quite soft stems, so do be careful that you don't crush them when you're making your bouquet. But I will guide you through that to make sure that everything is perfect. So once you have your flowers conditioned, we're ready now to start moving on and creating that perfect bouquet design. So what we'll do is we'll start with our key flower, which is our white rose. These are beautiful avalanche roses. They open out into really large flower heads and they're really impressive. We'll have that at the center of the bouquet. And then what we'll do is we'll start adding variety by variety around the central rose, gathering those stems in your thumb and your forefinger of your left hand. All you're going to do is guide the flowers around as you add in one of each of the stems from your selection until the rose is protected. Then we'll start adding further roses into the design and all of the other ingredients in an even distribution so that that entire design is really luxurious compact and heavenly to look at. You'll continue holding the bouquet design in your left hand between your thumb and your forefinger. This is really, really important. And in order to create that beautiful kind of spiral effect that you see when you get flowers from a florist, we're going to make sure that we continue to move our flowers around in an anti-clockwise direction at all times. Every stem that we add, we will lay over the front of where we are holding our flowers. So I take this stem here of wax flower, I lay it over the front of those that I've gathered at an angle at 45 degrees, and then I gather it between my thumb and my forefinger. I then just give a small twist, and then I move to the next area. So in this area, I'll add a little bit more wax flower. I place it where I want it at a 45 degree angle. I gather it between my thumb and my forefinger. 
and then I twist to the next area and that's where I'll now add something else. So we'll add a stock in here. I gather it, I twist. It's a very simple, repetitious process, but if you follow it carefully, this is what will create the ultimate bouquet. So you gather the stem, you twist, and you're always moving in the same direction in an anti-clockwise fashion as you gather all of your stems in your hand. So we'll take the viburnum again, we'll add a bunch of colour in there, lay it against the area we want, and then we twist. And then we'll add an ornithogalum. We'll lay it there and then we'll twist. And we'll continue to add our flowers now in an organised fashion. So we'll add in a stock, we'll add in some more of this glorious lilac and we'll slip in a few more roses. As you can see, we've now gathered a rose in the centre. We're about to start adding them further around the bouquet itself. And in order to do so, that ensures an even distribution of the ingredients. So you don't have all of the roses in the middle of the bouquet and then just one or two on the outside. We want it to be really nice and consistent. So, <clears throat> adding a few more roses here. Every time we turn in an anti-clockwise direction, we lay the rose over the stems before, we pinch and we twist. Doesn't matter if the shape isn't perfect at this stage, we can adjust it later, but we should now start to be seeing a soft circle about to form. We'll continue now adding our ingredients in. So we'll have another stock. Here I think we could use a little bit more wax flour. And this is where the artistry comes in. The artistry is all about the distribution of the flowers that you're working with, how to navigate those beautifully so you end up with a really sensitive combination of those selected blooms. And that's what turns a design from bleak to chic incredibly quickly. So I'll add in a little bit more zesty green. Don't worry if you are working with viburnum, they tend to be quite flopsy, they tend to have their own personality and I personally quite like that, but they will also start to appear a lot neater once we've got enough produce in the bouquet itself. So as we're turning now, we're really looking at what flowers are in front of us, what we've already placed and where there's a gap. What shape is that gap? How big is it? And we'll start to fill in with everything that we've got in front of us. So here we'll add in a couple of stems and then twist, always moving in an anti-clockwise direction. That's going to ensure the spiral effect on our stems later. These lilac are just enormous. And they're one of my favourite flowers. Stocks adding a really nice texture and adding a really nice scent. Have a little bit more green coming in here. Let's have a little more wax coming in here. Now I think it's time for a few more roses. So we'll pop in some more of our white roses here. Another one here. Ooh. Don't worry if they move a little bit, just pop them exactly back where you want them and we'll keep turning. Now, our bouquets do tend to get quite big, so make sure you've got strong hands. So let's have a little bit more viburnum. Any leaves that start to get in your way, you can just remove them at the same time.
do you make sure to keep looking at it as you add in your flowers and especially as it starts to get fuller and fuller and fuller do keep pulling it down taking a look at the shape what shape have you created there is it beautifully round and even yet if not that's where you want to twist the design round to we'll add in a little lilac here that's filling in that gap nicely and then we'll twist him round have another look again I need something here so I'm going to pick let's have a little bit of wax flower for texture and then also let's pop in another rose now you can start to see we're getting a really lovely shape beginning to form here I still have a little bit of a gap that I think we need to to deal with so let's let's go for another piece of lilac here and he'll just pop those viburnum under control as well if we just tuck them underneath so now you can see that gap's filled in really beautifully so now this is starting to take a really nice shape so we've got another little gap down here that we want to fill in so let's pop one more of these lilacs in they're such a good gap filler and they're such a beautiful generous flower and let's also pop in another rose and I think we're starting to kind of get to a really gorgeous shape at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hold the flowers in one hand, take my twine. If you are organised, you should get a length of this in advance and have it sat to one side so that you're not trying to do this one handed like I am. The thing about forestry is you really need three hands. <laughs> Taking the twine, you want to double it up. That'll make it much easier to handle. We're then going to just place the flowers themselves on the table. Just rest them there for a moment. They'll be absolutely fine. And then you're simply going to just do a double knot with your doubled up twine to hold those stems in place. It's quite little. Once you've got that there, you can also then just adjust any stems that you might want to, that might have just slipped as you've been making the design. Pull a couple of those down. And if you want to tweak any of the roses here, for example, and you want to lift those up, you want to go in from underneath and just tease those up a little bit. And then you can see him and nothing gets lost. You can then just lay him down ever so gently again. If you need to, because of the size of this bouquet, it's quite large you might want to just double up and just do another piece of twine around the stems just to be sure. So in which case, double the length, wrap him around the stems and a quick double knot to pop him into place. You can always go around one more time if you need to. off the excess string that you don't need. And then you have a very neatly tied bind point. Now that bind point is what we refer to when we're avoiding leaves being trapped in and around this area. We want to make sure that that's really nice and neat and clean because now you can see all of these stems are now compacted together. We don't want them to be actually collecting and creating bacteria. What we now want to do though is take our vase, 
that we filled with fresh water and added flower flue to earlier. And we want to measure our stems so that we can see exactly how they're going to sit. Pop it on the edge of the table. Measure your flowers down there. And then you'll be able to work out where on your stems you need to cut in order for them to sit perfectly. Then what you're going to do is snip straight across at this point on every single stem. It's quite noisy this bit, so. Some of these stems are very strong. just turn that over, keep snipping straight across those stems. Then as you fan those out, you'll notice that you've got a beautiful spiral shape. That's a little too tall for me. So I'm just going to bring him back out again and just trim those down a little bit further, just so that we've got the perfect height. get any really tough woody stems, secateurs is always a good idea as well. Okay, facing back into the bar, that's much nicer. And then simply arrange him into position. And all you're doing at this point is just checking the height of everything that you've got. As you turn him around, you can have a little look and just see if you're happy with the position. If you want to adjust anything, now's your opportunity to just tweak them up and down just to make sure all those flowers can be seen and they're all exactly as you're expecting. And there you have it, a really beautiful, round, hand-tied bouquet design. Perfect to go on the dining table, perfect if you're having people round for dinner or you want to celebrate, or if you just want to go out into the garden, celebrate what it is that you've got in the countryside and give that to a friend during lockdown. What could be nicer than cheering somebody up? If you would, however, like to buy one of the designs that we have available on buybloom.co.uk, as I mentioned at the start of the video, we're running an exclusive 10% off everything site-wide using the code ESSHOPS. So do make sure to log on, terms and conditions apply of course, and that'll be available to you in the very short interim period. So make sure, log on, shop and enjoy.